Now let's do the same thing with the sun. Imagine this is the sun. Of course, it's much bigger than the earth. Okay? So here is the earth. The sun attracts the near side of the earth with a bigger force and the other side with a smaller force. So you do that subtraction thing. So eventually what we're going to end up with is you subtract the two, delta F1 minus delta F2. So the distance from the center of the earth to the center of the sun, we're going to use the, it's 1 AU, so it's 1.4959. Seven eight seven times ten to the eleven meters, and then the, again with the radius of the Earth, we're going to use the same thing, which is going to be the uh, six point three seven eight. Okay, but this time the mass of the Sun is much much heavier, so we're going to have mass of Sun. We're going to use is. Um, 1.989 times 10 to the 30th kilogram. So if the sun had been the same mass as the moon, its tidal force on us would be so negligible it non-existent if it was that far away. But since it's heavier and it's farther away, its tidal force is still comparable to the moon's. So when you put the number in, so what are we changing here? We're just going to change this number and this number, of course, the top G, M, 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 you can factor it out of the equation. So you end up just doing, having to do this thing. So you could go take it out, just put 1 over, 1 over, and then delta F, G, M, M, and then put bracket here. And then this time put the distance of the sun to the earth, 1.989 times 10 to the 30th minus 6.378 and then uh, 1.989 times 10 to the 30th plus 6.378 but this time put the mass of the earth and mass of the sun so you're not putting the mass of the moon this time when you do this you're going to get tidal force of um, sun on earth comes out to be um, 6.04, times 10 to the 18. I'm being kind of picky here about the numbers, writing all the six figs. Now I'm going to divide these two. Now this one looks like it's about two times bigger than that. That's what we teach in our astronomy classes. And that is the truth, that the tidal force of the moon is about twice as strong as the tidal force of the sun. <coughs> so you could now divide these two, delta F of moon divided by delta F of sun, 1.31 668 times 10 to the 19 divided by 0.6041749 da 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 times 10 to the 19. What I did here is I just expressed this, moved the decimal point over, wrote it in 10 to the 19. And then 10 to the 19, 10 to the 19 cancel, and then the ratio comes out to be uh, 2.179 times 10 to the 19. So the uh, tidal force of the moon is two times stronger. That doesn't mean the gravitational force of the moon is two times stronger. It just means that we're closer to the moon and the difference of the two forces is stronger. Uh, so our tides are due more to the moon than they are from the sun, although the sun also has influence. There is in astronomy what's known as spring tide. When the sun is here and the earth is here and the moon is here or the moon is here. This occurs during first quarter and, uh, sorry, this occurs during full moon and new moon full, uh, phase of the uh, moon. This is full moon. This is new moon. Now what's going to happen? The tidal force of the moon, which is twice the tidal force of the sun, is going to add together. So you're going to end up getting something like this. Imagine this is the tidal force of the moon. 
I'm exaggerating here. So this is due to the moon. Now let me write the tidal force due to the sun. Okay, so it has something like this. Uh, Now add those two. You see the tidal force of the moon is twice the tidal force of the sun. So if you add those two, what do you get? Well, eventually the effect of those is that these two will add up and you're gonna get something like this. Okay, you're gonna get basically, this is gonna go like that. It's, and then this is gonna add up to that. So you're gonna get something looking like this, like that. So during first quarter and full moon phase, we expect the tides to be extra, extra high because the moon's uh, tidal force, which is twice as high as the sun's, you add them, you get like three times the tidal force of the sun alone. Two plus one is three. So it's a very, very high effect. Now on the, well, the other ones that are called neap tides, what ends up happening is the sun is here, the earth is here, and the moon is here or here. So it'll be first quarter and third quarter phase of the moon. So then the tides of the moon, which are the, uh, the red, so this is the moon, here is the tides. Okay, now the tides of the sun is half of that, but it's pointing this way. Right? So it's kind of like almost like this. Imagine. Okay? So what do you end up with during the course of the day on the, on the first quarter and third quarter phase of the, uh, the moon? Well, if you add this to this, you're not going to get a too big. And if you add this to this, you're not going to get too small. So you're going to end up with something like this. Yeah, something looking like this. Whereas this one, it's gonna be more stretched out like this. Okay, so in the sense they're fighting against each other when they're perpendicular to each other, you're, the high tide is not gonna be too high, the low tide is not gonna be too low. Whereas during, uh, first, during full moon and new moon, they're gonna be acting in the same direction. You can do a similar calculation to what I did. You can calculate the tidal force of the Earth on the moon and tidal force of the Earth on the sun and come up with an equation and an expression for that. What, what you're going to find is that the tidal force of the, the Earth on the moon is going to be very small because the moon is so small. The tidal force of the Earth on the sun is going to be bigger than the tidal force of the sun on the Earth because the sun is bigger than the earth. So the sun is gonna be kind of stretched out due to the tidal force of the earth on the sun. A little bit, but since the sun is very heavy, it doesn't influence the sun a lot. Okay, so you can see here how the law of gravity can be used to analyze tidal forces. Thank you very much.